Rainbow Records in Canoga Park, California, has been pressing vinyl discs since 1955. At the time, we were probably making around six, 8,000 pieces a day. In the 60s, we got much larger, and we were in the neighborhood of 30 to 40,000 records a day. Our heyday was in 77 when Elvis died. Within three days of Elvis's death, we were pressing 60,000 records a day, seven days a week. By the late 80s, Rainbow was back down to pressing eight to 10,000 vinyl records per day. But thanks to loyal listeners and avid collectors, records never completely went extinct. And today, something interesting is happening. We are presently pressing close to 25,000 a day, six days a week. There's definitely a resurgence in vinyl. Creating a vinyl record has always been part science, part mechanics, part craft. The modern method has its share of high-tech tweaks, but the basics have endured. In a studio, music is recorded as sound waves onto magnetic tape or digital medium. Those sound patterns are fed into a computer-controlled lathe, where a heated sapphire tip cuts a continuous spiral groove into the surface of a lacquer-covered aluminum disc. The groove is a mechanical translation of the frequency and amplitude of the sound waves. Low bass tones produce a wide groove, while higher frequencies are narrower. Next, the lacquer is sent to Rainbow for duplication. We're gonna spray it with silver, and then we're gonna hang it into a tank and build a nickel surface on it. The silver coating makes the surface conductive to electricity, allowing a current to pass through, and the nickel to adhere to it through electroplating. Then we're gonna separate the two pieces, and then you had a positive, and now you have a negative. The A and B side negatives, called the master, are placed back in the electroplating tank to create positives, called the mother. From the mother, up to 40 pairs of negative stampers, which will press the final records, can be made before quality degrades. Now, science gives way to the mechanics and craft of record making. This is a record press. We have two labels, two stampers which have the information on it. We glue the stamper onto the mold, so you got an A side and a B side. You got an A-side and a B-side label. Workers pour PVC pellets into the machine, where they're melted and formed into a malleable puck that will become the disc. The polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, is about 330 degrees. The press is about 330 degrees when it closes. It goes under 1,800 pounds of pressure, and it squeezes out, and it's Kind of like making a waffle. Instead of pouring in batter, we're pouring in vinyl. About 30 seconds later, the formed disc emerges on the other side. After the record gets pressed and it gets cooled down, it comes out to the trimming station, and the trimming station trims off the excess. This excess will recycle and use again. Once the record is trimmed, if that record is finished, other than quality control and packaging. By contrast, Rainbow makes CDs, about 100,000 a day, in sterile looking rooms on the other side of the factory. There's audiophile guys who are still buying records, but what's really driving it today is 13 to 24 year olds who have discovered this new thing called a record. You know, people always ask you what you do for a living, and I would always say, you know, I make CDs and records, and I would always hear, they still make records? And, you know, I tell them how many we make, and they're always amazed. Um, recently, I was at a party sitting at a table, and same conversation, I said, we make records, CDs, and the comment back to me was, they still make CDs? 